Aligned like staves of music, the vines, one of the finest scores of the Côte d'Or, are deep in hibernation. In a few months' time, their delicious notes will delight the palates of connoisseurs. In the meantime, wine growers are preparing for spring by pruning the old shoots that have become too cumbersome. This one's no good. It's last year's, so we'll burn it. In the springtime, we'll tie the new shoots to rods like this. Then the branches will grow and we'll have bunches of grapes. They'll need to show patience. But Vincent Raveau has tons of it. For over a century, this vineyard near Bonne has been handed down from generation to generation. And there's little time off, even in winter. Winter is the longest season here, so we have lots of time to do other jobs. It's a season I love because the landscapes are beautiful. You warm yourself up with hard work, but the real work isn't on the surface, it's two or three meters underground. Because the secret of a great Burgundy wine is perhaps down in the cellars, where the wines are developed in oak barrels. Once just simple containers, today barrels are carefully selected by wine growers, who call on renowned coopers like Max Gigandet. Making a high-quality barrel begins with exceptional wood. We buy only oaks of about 150 years old. We need trunks with a wide enough diameter to produce the quality of wood that's needed for a wine to age until it reaches its peak. Centuries-old know-how and unchanged techniques handed down through four generations. Haute couture fashioned with a hammer. The skirt is yet to be sewn together, but it's already starting to twirl. Next, it needs heating and dampening to make the wood flexible and prevent it from splitting during hooping. Barrel making is often compared to ancient shipbuilding. It's wood against wood with no glue. The joints are perfectly cut and fit perfectly with the pressure from the steel hoops alone, making the barrel completely watertight. Made to measure with either soft or hard oak and hotter or cooler heating. The intensity of the heat affects the color inside the barrel, but also that of the wine. Color, grilled almond, vanilla. Each wine grower seeks their own balance. The barrel is a tool to age wines, to stabilize the color, amongst other things, for the sake of the wine. But the barrel must never dominate the wine. The lids must then be sealed with flour and water and recently with buckwheat flour, because American customers want their wine gluten-free. The dough seals the barrel and makes it watertight. Without the dough, the wine would seep out. A hundred barrels are made here each day and tested over and over again. Then the finishing. The barrel is sanded, hooped again, and branded, so it's ready for dispatch. 80% of the barrels are exported to American, Australian, and New Zealander wine growers. Close to Bonne again, Gregory Patria has something that money can't buy, a gift. The job of this enologist is to accompany the wines of this vineyard along the path to excellence. If you taste honey-like, oxidative notes, it means the wine has pretty much aged and you should bottle it. Here, the notes are fresh and floral, meaning you can age it a bit more. This one is at 16 months. The aim is, with a single grape variety, to obtain thousands of different interpretations and nuances. Wine spends six to 18 months in the barrel before continuing to age in the bottle. 
sometimes for a very long time. This 1924 Richbourg, whose color is still reddish and hasn't turned a Madeira color, is still very drinkable and enjoyable on the palate. It's a real gem because more than a mere wine, it tells a story. It's a piece of history which always brings out strong emotions when you taste such an old wine. In midwinter, when the wine shivers in the cold, the depths of the Côte d'Or keep their age-old secrets well hidden.